One thing about American water towers is that they actually help you pinpoint where you are. Because in the event that your GPS goes down, you can simply look out of your window and realise you've ended up in Salem. Thankfully, this is just stock footage from my provider and I'm not aware. My friends, what is this? Why are those water towers so big? Not gonna lie, I actually, I like the design. But this is coming in America, really? Today I'll be reacting to 8 objects I only encountered after moving to America, Roadside Edition. My friends, I really wonder what those are, but uh, before I go into that, uh, let me ask you for one thing. If you can leave a like, uh, thank you so much, is the best way to show support. Uh, if you can subscribe, uh, well in that case, uh, yeah, forget about it, you make my day. F that in consideration, no. Link for the original video in my description and uh, let's play it. Fell asleep in the car again. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to what? uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one I know. of those memos pertains to our roads. Okay. Oh boy. Specifically some of the things we encounter while traversing those roads. Because while we can all have a laugh. Okay, sorry, before we go into the video, I'm trying to think about things you guys see in the road that are different than what we have here in Europe. And uh, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess one thing actually. Uh, maybe the cars are bigger, could be that, right? Uh, but I don't know, seems they, Europe and America on this, they seem the same thing almost, no? For each country's propensity for driving on the wrong side of the road, we've been too busy not noticing what's around us. And so in just a moment, I and my wife, who fell asleep in the house like a regular person, are going to go for a little drive to look at eight things that I only encountered Great. after hitting the American His wife road. Will appear. And so while we're waiting, if you're the sort of person who likes learning about British versus amazing. American cultural differences and you haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, do that now. Already did, and do it for me also, meantime, my friends. here she is. Let's get going. Let's go. The show... No, no, not the show. The shoe must go on. What? The shoe. Shoes? Shoes. What shoes? This was the weirdest thing. When I first moved to America, probably in the first year, I kept seeing shoes dangling from telephone wires. And it was oh, no chance. My friends, I saw the commentary on Netflix I believe this is related with gangs and drug drug dealers and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Unless in America you guys have some different uh, idea about this, but at least this is the idea I have. It was weird because at first I thought, oh, that was just somebody drunk who threw them up there. And then I saw them about four or five times and thought, maybe it's the same family who like to climb these things and just spontaneously combust. I, like, I've seen it before, You've but I don't it. know why people do that. It's <laughs> weird. I didn't see this in Britain. And Never saw this all the in my city. Here. But maybe there's another reason behind it. I'm going to look into that in yeah, just a moment. Take a okay, look. I lied. I actually became aware of this phenomenon before moving to America. I saw it in the film Big Fish with Ewan McGregor. However, since what? the 2003 film leans heavily into fairy tale, I just assumed that shoe dangling was part of that. But apparently it's fairly common throughout most of America, even if Americans can't agree on the reasons for it. In some really? regions, shoe tossing apparently commemorates the end of school or the start of a marriage. What? Others connect the practice to the military, while in major cities like Los Angeles or here in Chicago, popular legend likes to link it to the activity of gangs. Okay. Either way, that's why I don't wear shoes with laces that okay my friends for real uh what is the meaning behind that i always associated with gangs but i guess uh, can be associated with military the end of the school and stuff like that that's that's amazing actually and i'm irredeemably lazy drip drop Speaking of films, that brings us on perfectly to our next entry, which is Water Towers. And at this point, I can visualize Uncle towers. Toby frantically typing away on his keyboard, saying something like, Ooh, Lawrence, what do Water Towers have to do with films? And also, uh, yeah. we have Water Towers in the UK. What's your point? Well, let me address both points one by one. The film... Actually, we also have Water Towers here, but uh, they are made of concrete. Uh, and I believe in America, they are made of metal, right? Uh, and uh, my friends... This is a stupid question, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, why people have... Uh, what's the reason behind water towers? What? <laughs> I actually, I don't know. 
problem is what's eating Gilbert Grape, right? We've all seen that scene where Leonardo da Vinci, DiCaprio, climbs up a water tower and the whole town tries to get him down. And watching that film growing up in England, I couldn't help but notice two things. One, that the water tower appeared to be quite top heavy. And two, yeah. that it was entirely made of metal. You see? Oh, that water tower was big. Typically, water towers in Britain are these concrete, brutalist looking buildings yeah, that same look here. like something from a scary film, which is Very why rare, my brother and I had nightmares. But in America, it turns out that the water tower in What's Eating Gilbert Grape is a fairly old style one. The ones I see around towns here in the Midwest look just as metallic and even more top heavy. And the fun. Wait, what? My friends, these type of water towers are coming in America this big? Made of metal all the time? Oh, that's crazy. One thing about American water towers is that they actually help you pinpoint where you are. Because in the event that your GPS goes down, you can simply look out of your window and realize you've ended up in Salem. Thankfully, this is just stock footage from my provider and I'm not aware. My friends, what is this? Why are those water towers so big? Not gonna lie, I actually, I like the design. But this is coming in America, really? And this is, all of this is metal? Oh, wow. Which or living in the past. Plus, that was Salem, Ohio, not Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, America. Pumpy tap? What? <laughs> oh, there's something we don't have a lot of in Britain. It is what looks like a huge bouncing castle, but is in... What the hell is that also? Oh, my God, this video is crazy. This is a balloon? Some type of balloon in the ground? Trying to go into the air? fact a sort of well, kind of a blow-up building an inflatable yeah. building and I think when I first saw one of these I just assumed that's where America stores all of the aliens Ooh, could be that but it's actually a lot more innocent than that what usually happens inside these big blow-up buildings tennis tennis what? it's a sports and recreation <laughs> center tennis. and these things are sort of all over the Midwest and even on our honeymoon when we went to the Eagle's Nest which is a restaurant high up in Indianapolis we overlooked the RCA dome when it was still around what and that was similar looking oh just God. larger <laughs> I've just realized I do occasionally see English footballers honing their skills in domes like this so since I left the UK perhaps they took off you know not literally okay, that perhaps. would be chaos for air traffic Never saw control that. but they do look like they could we didn't get the memo in the past, my subscribers have heard me talk about how American roads are often lined with billboards. But in the sure. interest of not wanting to cover old ground again, I'd like to talk about a different type of board entirely. Notice boards. Specifically, notice boards that you tend to see outside of churches or schools. And again, calm down, Toby. I know we have those in Britain. Well, we don't have, or at least didn't, when I lived... Church of God. I thought all, all churches are of God. Uh, okay. The scratch, okay. There are electronic notice boards. These things are everywhere. At school, it might say... Welcome to... Oh my God, look at that word. How do you guys think I can go to America and, uh, and take... Uh, you know, it's impossible. Kibla Blah Town? No, no, but let's be serious. Kibla... Kibla Town Middle School? Say something like, ooh, this week the kids are having a fun run. Or if it's outside of a church, Jesus is returning this Tuesday. Bring water. Whereas in Britain, if we have notice boards like this, they're probably handwritten in chalk. Or written on a piece of paper with an arrow through it. Okay. Ready, steady, go. Over here next to Trader Joe's. It's really good. It you is. Go and eat there. Take a break from the video and do that. Yeah. Before I do that though, I just want to talk about traffic lights. In America, huh? you have traffic lights that are literally hanging, seemingly by a- Oh my god, finally someone talks about this. I always find, find this weird, but I was afraid to say it, actually. I don't get to- Okay, sorry, actually the, the last one was- Okay, if there is a lot of wind, they don't crash against each other. I never got this. The ones we have here, they they don't, you know, go go like this. I I, I really don't get what why you guys made it this way. Seemingly by a thread a lot of the time. I mean, it's by multiple cables, but I think visually that's probably one of those things that stands out the most when you first visit America oh, and you are sure. on the road. That and the size of the cars. Oh. 
And then you have traffic lights that are on a pole, but it's a horizontal pole and it just... No, but the either we also have those. This looks like the whole thing will come down if there's a bad storm. Whereas in Britain, our traffic lights usually sit on a vertical pole at the side of the road. Personally, okay. I don't care about this either way. I just want to know what you call them. Because in America, I've heard traffic light, stop and go light, and just stop light. Let me know in the comments below. Yeah. Come again. When I first moved to the United States, there was this one occasion when my wife asked me to meet her at a strip mall. And being new to the country, I misinterpreted what that meant and ended up at my first ever pole dancing class. But eventually <laughs> I learned what strip malls are and we all had a very, very good laugh at me. For those of you that don't know, a strip mall is basically a mini mall with a parking lot slash car park and an array of shops and or eating establishments next to that car park. And they all follow a similar pattern. There'll be one or two multinational chains like a Subway or a Starbucks, surrounded by lesser-known local places and a vaping store. Now, in Britain, I've come to learn that strip malls do in fact exist, but not quite in the same way and don't usually go by strip malls. But the major thing to note about our equivalent of it is they're just not as ubiquitous. And Uncle Toby, ubiquitous just means omnipresent. And omnipresent means that something is all over the place. A bit like your comments, in more ways than one. Dome sweet... Oh my I've just remembered something. For years after moving here, I was confused by the sight of something that I would see by the side of highways. And I'm not just talking about that creepy doll I saw off I-65. I'm talking about weird domes. They crop up every now and again, and they look like the sort of building into which nobody ever goes in and nobody ever comes out. And I swear, before making this... Oh, friends, I have to say one thing. This video is tremendous because I'm learning a lot of new stuff. I wonder if you guys are aware of all of this or... Uh... Maybe because Lawrence lives in the Midwest, maybe a couple of those things are more in the Midwest and not in, in, in America in general. This video, I went my entire American life without knowing what they are. It turns out that they're a storage facility for salt, which I suppose Chicago needs a lot of in the winter. Oh, is it see, that kind could of be a Midwest know. thing. What I do know is that when you have to track one down for the purposes of content, they're so mysterious that you can't find one. Or are they? We actually found one. We were looking around, but the maps weren't very useful. There is a salt storage facility. I don't see any it's a salt pedum. or pepper. Anyone who's ever seen an American film that involves a police car chase has probably seen one of these get destroyed. Yes, it's an American fire hydrant, and I dare say that many Americans, including myself, have lived here so long that we've become completely desensitized to their existence. But the truth is, you can barely drive a block in my area of the world without seeing them hanging out on a street corner. Oh, but this my is favorite smart. is when they're painted in... To be honest, my friends, can we all agree those are beautiful? They look, they look like a mini fireman. <laughs> such a way that they end up looking like a human member of the fire brigade. But growing up in Britain, I never really... Yeah, let, let me take a look again. <laughs> but uh, they tend to be red. Maybe they're also yellow? ...such a way that they end up looking like a human member of the fire brigade. But growing up in Britain, I never really saw our fire hydrants because they're hidden underground. The fire brigade oh, no, accesses we it have with, it also, I don't know, like some you, sort of friends, magic key port. and fights the fire that way. And you might be thinking, how do they know where it is? Simple. If you've ever been to Britain, you might have noticed these little pillars containing the letter H. This is just a marker letting everybody know where the hydrant is. I just wanted to explain mm, that for those great. of you who wondered why British action films don't have the trope of the damaged hydrant. Anyway, most American hydrants look like this. I would get up. Damn. I would, I would love to have one and put that on my back. <laughs> you know, that, oh, that would look so good on my background. Damn, look at that. Whew. No, that's impossible because I know, but I'm just saying. Damn. That red on red. I'm all about it. Oh, close, but I don't own it. Plus, it's covered in dog piss. Arthur, can you smell Penelope on drama. that? Such a romantic story. And that's it for this episode. I'm Lawrence <sighs> Brown. You can follow me on Twitter and or threads. And Sounds don't forget amazing. to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. Here's a video that you're going to watch next. And a big shout out to my ponderers who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a ponderer and gain access to my secret live stream, as well as my secret video series, Diary of a YouTube Sensation, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond or by clicking the join button below. Until the next video, goodbye. Okay, my friends, show him all the support, like like I didn't say, Lawrence is pretty great. Uh, this was a crazy one, I feel like, because a lot of those things I... Oh, man.
The water towers being so big really surprises me. And the aesthetical, maybe some people don't even like that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this was uh, amazing, like I said. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this with me, my friends. Really means a lot. You guys know, staying until the end. See you guys in the next one.